Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. It's come to my attention that I've been doing lots of integrals, but I still haven't tackled definite integrals, so it's time to do just that. Well, in order to evaluate a definite integral, we're essentially using the fundamental theorem of calculus, what some people would call the FTC part two. And the way that works is you're gonna take a look at your integral and you're gonna find the antiderivative of this original inside function, and then you're going to plug in the top and bottom bounds and subtract the two. Now the tough part about this is that you really just wanna keep things nice and clean while you're going through these different steps. In other words, do not try and do too many steps at once and definitely keep it clean. Uh, it's really just a lot of bookkeeping and of course trying to find that antiderivative so that you can get to that next step. All right, let's go ahead and look at the example, see exactly what I'm talking about. So in this first one, I'm dealing with the uh, integral from one to four of two x squared minus x. And in the first step, you really just want to worry about finding that antiderivative. Yes, we'll eventually plug in the bounds and do all that fun stuff, but you know, don't worry about that for now. Just look at the function and see if you can find its antiderivative. In this particular one, I'm going to use a power rule. So we'll add one to the power. In this case, it goes from two into three and we'll divide by that new power. So two is going to be divided by three. Uh, let's see, next part here, since it's being uh, subtracted, I can just find its antiderivative and we'll do the same thing. We'll add one to the power, I'll turn it into a two and we'll divide by that new power. So here in this first step, I'm only finding an antiderivative. The way I want to remember that I still need to plug in some bounds into this is I like to put in a pair of square brackets and then put in my bounds right off to the side. So that tells me, yes, I found the antiderivative. Now it's time to evaluate this. All right, so let's do that. So you want to write your um, expression for the antiderivative here, uh, starting with the top bound plugged in. And then we'll go ahead and plug in the bottom bound. So let's see, that's all good. Uh, I'm gonna leave this in a square bracket to make sure that I keep that all combined together. And then let's go ahead and plug in the bottom bound. Now the important part about having this uh, in brackets here is we want to subtract this entire second piece. If I didn't put in some grouping symbols here of some sort, uh, it's often a common mistake to not distribute that negative sign. And then your answer is just slightly off and we don't want that. All right, so it looks like it's turning out pretty good, uh, but now I have to evaluate all these different cubes and squares. So at this point, it's really a bookkeeping problem. It's really just trying to keep track of what numbers uh, you should get. Let's see, four cubed would be 64 times two, there's 128. That's still divided by three. Uh, four squared is 16 times a one half, so that'll just turn into eight. Let's see, off to the other side here. Uh, one cubed is just one, so that'll be one times two thirds, there's a two thirds, and one squared is one, so there's our one half. So things are looking fine. Uh, I'm definitely keeping those grouping symbols as much as I can, you know, simplifying but eventually we will go ahead and distribute into the second grouping symbol. That way we can actually start combining even more things. All right, so let's see, what does that give us? Uh, well, this will still be 128 all over three minus eight, and then we'll have a minus two thirds, then minus minus will give us a plus one half. All right, so as we're going through this algebra, we are making progress. Essentially, we've taken our integral and just turned it into these numbers. And again, we just have a little bit more algebra to go ahead and take it farther. Uh, 128, if I subtract the two, since these both have the same denominator, that will give me a 126 over three. And then I still have this minus eight and a plus one half. All right, that's not looking too bad. Uh, let's see, 126 divided by three, that simplifies nicely. That turns into a 42. So now I have 42 minus eight. Uh, we can simplify that into a 34. So I'm really looking at 34 plus one half. Uh, if we want, we can go ahead and combine those by finding a common denominator. So that'd be a 68 over two plus one half. So we could call this a 69 over half. So there's really a couple of ways you could write your answer. You could leave it as the 34 and a half or if you want to write it as a fraction, you could write it as this 69 and a half. Either way, that would give us the value of our definite integral. Now, just to show you the importance of finding that antiderivative and, and an excuse to do just one more example, we'll do this guy right here. So we look at this integral and you want to think carefully about your antiderivatives for the inside. 
In this particular one, even though it may uh, not seem like a common one, you want to remember it, the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arctangent. This seems to be a very common one that teachers like to uh, throw on exams or whatnot when finding antiderivatives. Of course, you got to know your inverse trigonometric functions to be able to do this. All right, so we have our antiderivative. That's just the first step. Now let's go ahead and plug in our bounds. So even though it's kind of a, a strange looking function, we're just going to evaluate it at the top bound, minus, and then evaluate it at the bottom bound. So nothing too crazy. I just have to figure out what is the value of arctangent of one and negative one. These aren't too bad. Uh, arctangent of one is just a pi over four, minus, and arctangent of negative one, this will be a negative pi over four. So here again, I'm being really careful what to do with my negative signs. This negative sign comes from subtracting both my antiderivatives. This negative sign comes from evaluating this arctangent of negative one. All right, so pi over four minus a minus will give us a plus. So we just have one fourth pi plus another fourth pi. We have a total of two fourths pi or two pi over four, no matter what you wanna call it. So this gives us just pi over two when we reduce it. And there's our answer. So you can see doing definite integrals is not so bad. You really just have to find the antiderivative and then go ahead and plug in your bounds starting with the top and the bottom, subtract the two. All right, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to see some more videos, definitely visit mysecretmathtutor.com.